Hi, this is David at Mash IT. A little while ago I bought a Razorblade Stealth 13. Lovely little Ultrabook and it's been one of my favourite Windows machines for quite a while now. It's not the best gaming laptop, but it's a really good mixed use laptop. So I work on it, it's got good battery life, reasonable speakers, and the game performance is okay. But I've always been wondering how good it would it be to add an eGPU and get home, plug it in in the office, and actually fire up some decent games. So I've managed to pick up a Razer Core X Chroma, and with a shortage of graphics cards at the moment, I've managed to pick up a second-hand 2080 Super. Now what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to be installing this graphics card into the eGPU, and then we're going to be benchmarking it on this Razer Blade 13 to see how it performs in comparison to the inbuilt 1650 Ti. Now we have already reviewed this Razer Blade Stealth. This is the early 2020 model with the 10th gen i7-1065U processor. So obviously now that we've got the late 2020 with the Tiger Lake processor in it. I don't think there's going to be a massive amount of difference and it might be something we'll be checking in the future depending on how we get on with this 10th gen. So I'm going to then cut now to the opening of the eGPU and we're going to install a graphics card. So this is the Razer Core X Chroma. I picked this up also second hand so I don't have the retail box but it's in pretty good condition. Uh, with the actual eGPU you also get a very short Thunderbolt cable. This provides your power delivery to your laptop so it's a one cable solution to your laptop. That's something I've always liked. This will deliver the power and the data for this uh, eGPU to my uh, Razorblade Stealth. You also get a power lead, and that's pretty much it. But with the Core X Chroma, as well as with the lighting, this also has some ports on the back. So on the back of the eGPU, obviously your power supply and your Thunderbolt cable plug in here. We've also got an RJ45 and four USB 3s. Now this is something that I was particularly looking forward to with this model because I want to be able to just plug in my stealth when I'm back in the office and have my keyboard, my mouse and my graphics card all just fire up straight away from this box. I don't want to be plugging anything else in or out of the actual laptop itself if I can help it. I just want an all-in-one solution. So that is the plan for today. Now one good thing about the Razer Core X Chroma or the Razer Core X is Razer have made a pretty much tallest design. So to get into this machine You've got a little handle, you slide that out, and then you pull this whole section out. So hopefully we've got a decent view of the unit here. With this model, Razer supply a 700 watt ATX power supply. Now, all we have from this power supply is the, the eight pin cable to the board, and then two eight pin PCIe power connectors for your graphics card. So it's quite sparse, but that's all we're going to need. And other than that, we've got a fan to keep this thing running cool. So we're going to quickly install, take a thumb screw out. One thumb screw that holds the graphics card in place. I'm going to pop in my 2080 Super. Plug in the power cables to the graphics card. Just tidy those away so they're not in the way of the fan. Okay, so now I've just plugged the cables in, I've just tidied them up with a Velcro tie there just so it doesn't knock into the fan, and that's it. We're going to slide it back into the case and we're going to power it on. Lock the handle back in, that's it, we're done. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna quickly set the desk up with a monitor, keyboard and mouse, and we're gonna fire it up and we're gonna start the testing. Right, so we're up and running. So we're using a 25 inch Alienware 240 hertz screen for this test. Now the reason we've chosen this screen is because it's 1080p, which is the same resolution as the Stealth, so that we can see how much of a difference there is between the two at the same resolution. I think obviously with the graphics card in the eGPU, you probably are better off at higher settings or higher resolution, but for this test, I wanna just see them like for like with the internal graphics card. We've also got plugged into the eGPU um, a Razer Death Adder and a Razer Black Widow Tournament TKL keyboard. They're just plugged straight into the eGPU, so then it's just the one cable from the eGPU over onto the Razer Blade Stealth, and that then provides the power and the data backward and forward. So it's a nice convenient setup, but how does it run? 
So to start off with, we're going to just quickly fire up Time Spy with this uh, 2080 eGPU. Now looking at the results, you can see it doesn't score quite as well as a 2080 Super would if it's in a decent desktop, but it's not doing bad at uh, 10,000 odd graphics mark uh, on you know the, the eGPU. Now basically what we're going to do now is we're going to run a load of uh, games side by side so you can see the difference between uh, the internal machine and the eGPU. I've just chosen just a few games at random and we've just done a, just a couple of minutes on each just so you can take a look. Now one thing I will say by running this test is I think it's very much limited by the CPU on the Stealth which is a 4 core 8 thread CPU that maxes out about 3.5 gigahertz it does seem to keep the frame rate down at 1080p. So I think you are better off if you're going to run something like this, running a high resolution or whacking the settings up on the eGPU. And it's a nice, comfortable experience running it through the monitor using the eGPU. It was nice and fluid, but it did take a little bit of faffing around to get it working in the first place. Now, when you first plug the Thunderbolt in, you just should accept the connection and, and that's it. And that's great, but what I did find I had to do is actually disable the internal 1650 Ti on the Stealth otherwise I had quite a lot of stutter during the games. As soon as I disabled the 1650 Ti in Device Manager, it ran really smoothly throughout the rest of the testing. Then what you do need to remember to do is, once you've finished and you've disconnected the eGPU, you do need to remember to go back into Device Manager and re-enable your 1650 Ti. Now looking at the frames side by side in the games that we've been running, it's quite disappointing, and I think that is mostly due to the actual CPU overhead on this. But you're looking at, you know, at maximum about 30, 40 frames per second higher using a 2080 Super over a 1650 Ti. I was hoping to get much higher frame rate than this. But I will say, playing with it and using the eGPU was a nice smooth experience throughout the whole time. And if I wasn't running MSI Afterburner, I'd have been quite happily running along, playing and enjoying the games. So I think we can get too sort of tied up in the actual benchmarks. Now throughout the testing and throughout plugging and unplugging I did have a couple of blue screens which is a bit of a shame. I was thinking that obviously eGPUs have been out for quite a while now, that you think the drivers are nice and mature, you think that this would be sort of like knocked out by now. But twice during my testing over a couple of days I got a blue screen and I had to restart the whole lot and plug it all back in again for it to work. So in conclusion, what do I like about it? Well. It's nice in that I can keep upgrading the graphics card as time goes by and you know, not limited to what is in the actual laptop. It's a one cable solution, so I can plot my razor blade stealth down in the office when I get back in in the evening, plug it in, and I've got a much more powerful, capable system to actually use for a bit of gaming or 3D rendering or whatever it is I'm planning to do for the evening. It also charges the laptop, which is handy, and it gives it 100 watts that down through to the laptop so you get no battery drain whilst using this. So these are all great features. But what do I dislike about this Razer Core XT GPU? Firstly, I think they're very tight with the length of cord they give you. Obviously, you've got to try and fit this all into a desk setup, and unless you're going to buy a longer Thunderbolt cable, you're quite restricted in how you actually want to lay out the laptop away from the eGPU. The next thing that I'm not 100% keen on is it's got a 700 watt PSU inside the Razer Core X eGPU. And that's great, but they could have used a decent one. The, the actual power supply that they've used has got quite a noisy fan in it. Now, if you're gaming, you're not going to notice it over the actual graphics card or the, the laptop noise. But it's when you're sitting there idling away, working, you can hear this fan spinning up the entire time. And it does get a little bit annoying, if I'm honest, but I do like a quiet environment. What's particularly annoying is when you put the laptop to sleep at the end of the day, if it's still plugged into the Thunderbolt, that fan on that ATX PSU just carries on spinning the entire time it's plugged in. I think this is a real oversight from Razer. They should have either tried to use a passive or semi-passive PSU in there, or they should have at least used a decent Corsair or a decent branded with a decent fan in that you're not going to be noticed or distracted by the fan when you're working away and it's just idling in the background. So, in conclusion, would I recommend this? I think if you've got an Ultrabook and you don't want to have a desktop as well, you want to have it all on one machine, then you're certainly going to get a lot of enjoyment out of an eGPU. But it comes at a massive cost. This Razer Core X is about £379 in the UK, and then you've got to add into that the graphics card of your choosing, so you're probably looking at about £700, £800 minimum for a decent eGPU setup, in addition to the cost of your laptop. Now, that said, if you have got the laptop, it is a handy solution that you can use, especially if you, like I did, pick it up second hand, it's not quite so much of a cost burden. But, in all honesty, I think you're far better off, if you don't mind managing two systems, to build up a cheap ITX desktop 
with a reasonable CPU in, which would be way more powerful than this stealth CPU, and having a probably smaller case than you can have here, but pretty much the same sort of cost. And then you also still get to choose those components that are in there. So would I buy this again? I would have to say I probably wouldn't. I think I'll probably just stick to the ITX room. It's been a fun project and I'm going to keep playing with it. I'm going to be testing four cores versus six cores in a laptop through this eGPU next to see if that's what's causing the major bottlenecks. But overall, I'd certainly say I think your money could be better spent on an ITX system or a dedicated gaming system over an eGPU. So I'm going to leave it there. But we will leave these games running in the background, so if you still want to see some more of the gameplay footage, please continue to watch to the end of the video. But I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. And please hit like and subscribe and the notification button if you'd like to see further videos on this eGPU where we're going to do some more testing. And there are plenty of other videos we've got coming up shortly. Thank you.